Hey everybody, what's going on? Welcome back to the 25 Days of Linux. This is the 10th video in this series and I have to address something kind of important and that is a serious lack of soul that has been missing in these videos. I've been making them, editing them for a little while now, like I said, I'm 10 videos deep here and I noticed there's just something missing. Ardbeg. So, uh, today's video is actually going to be about uh, the fish shell. This is a little bit different from the shells that I like to use. I'm uh, normally a Zeesh user, but I certainly don't have anything against Bash or anything like that either. Um, this is a bit of a different route. You know, if I take a look at my normal shell here, this is the Z shell that I typically use. It's a very simple prompt, a couple of things running with it. I did make a video about my Zeesh config. I'll put a card up there if I remember, but really it's it's not very complex. I don't get complicated with the shell, but thing that I think is a little bit annoying for people is if I do go into my config for Zeesh, the whole thing is controlled via this uh, config file, which can be a little bit daunting for new users. Although like 90% of it is just aliases, which is about the easiest thing to do in a shell config. But it can be a little bit daunting to set up like a custom prompt the way that I have here and a few other things like that. The fish shell sort of aims to fix that. It's, it's aiming to be a very, very new user friendly shell which maybe that means it won't be the kind of thing that I'm super into, but being user-friendly is always something that I can get behind. I do like sort of more minimal and you could argue complex apps uh, that require a learning curve, require building configuration files, but I'm certainly never gonna be against making things easier for people who are new to using the command line or new to Linux or whatever else. So uh, let's go ahead and install this thing. Assuming you're on Arch, it should be as easy as sudo pacman-s fish pops up right there. Uh, if you are on Ubuntu, should be sudo apt install fish, and uh, I think it's sudo yum install on CentOS and stuff like that. Fedora, sudo pacman dash s and install fish. And boom, we're done. Basically the way that you change a shell, if you don't know how, is if you cat out a file, uh, I think it's called Etsy shells, maybe? Yeah, this should show all of the shells that you have installed. And as you install more shells, they should automatically add themselves to this list. Uh, but basically the way that you would change a shell is you do change shell dash S is how you do it. And you would put in the location of the shell. So in this case, it would be like slash bin fish. And then you just type in your username. It's pretty easy. But in this particular case, I'm not really wanting to change my shell necessarily. I'm not even sure if I like this yet. So we should be able to just run fish. And uh, now we're in the fish shell. So you can sort of see the basic prompt. It's just your username and your host name. And um, uh, sort of the main claim to fame here is it's doing a lot of the stuff that like, oh my Zeesh and oh my Bash do by default and making it easier to type commands. So you can see here, uh, immediately our prompt is gonna be colored to sort of differentiate between the command and now it's a folder and it's gonna be wanting to autofill. Uh, tab complete obviously works really, really well. On the forward a CD into a directory that has some more folders, you can see it's gonna list all those out. As I type something else out, it clears it out. Uh, and it's just a generally uh, more dynamic and uh, well-built shell, I guess is, is what you would say. So if I go ahead and run help, it says it's going to open up the help in Firefox. Oh yeah, here we go. Uh, what I'm particularly interested in though is configuration. I'm pretty sure that fish does actually store a config fish file uh, right here. And you can see it's a little bit more complicated than others. It has a folder for completions, a, a folder for functions, uh, and also fish variables. Uh, but it does also just have a config.fish file, which is basically blank by default because um, kind of what I was talking about a few videos ago about BPYTOP is while it does have a config file, um, it allows you to do a lot of the configuration just in the app and then saves it to the config file so that if when you back it up, when you if you have it get controlled or whatever, and you're syncing it across multiple systems, you'll still be able to save your configs, but you don't actually have to jump into the config files and get really into the weeds. Sorry about the neighbors upstairs, guys, but we're gonna keep rolling here. I got videos to make. Uh, so I think a good example of that is if we run a fish config prompt, what it should do is give us just a list of sort of the different prompts that it can use. So I don't know, let's try and uh, try some of these out. So we could do like fish 
config prompt and what is minimalist? We'll give that a shot. That sounds like something that might be up my alley. For some reason, it's not tab completing it. Okay, nope, it's because I did it wrong. I have to run prompt choose minimalist. And okay, there we have a nice, that seems a little more like the kind of font I would want to use. Just, uh, I don't actually know what the uh, little parenthesis there is denoting. Huh, okay. Uh, maybe let's try uh, fish config prompt choose. And I forget what the other ones. I think there was one called Nim. This one seems a little more complex. It's got host name, username, the time. I don't like that. That seems ridiculously complex. Uh, what are my options again? Let me pull those back up. Fish config prompt. Uh, let's do fish. God damn. Uh, config prompt choose disco. Huh? Why not? Oh, that was actually kind of nice. Now, what this actually does is it actually just saves this prompt to our current session. So if I were to run fish again, you can see it actually, it didn't save that prompt. Uh, so what we would then have to do is run, if I'm reading this right, fish config prompt save disco. And I overwrite the prompt. And then if I run fish again, okay, it gave me an error, but when I run fish again, it did change the prompt. So I don't know what that error is about. So that's pretty cool. Um, that's sort of how you're meant to customize the fish prompt. And if we go ahead and we come in here and we do uh, fish config, uh, you can see it also pulls up the history here, which I can imagine being kind of handy if you run a lot of the same sort of commands over and over again. But what I want to do now is I want to run fish config browse. And uh, oh, this opens up another browser window for me. It's, oh, well, hey, look at this. It actually has uh, color schemes that it works with. I didn't actually even notice. This actually is not using my color schemes. Uh, I didn't notice it until it pointed out, but no, this isn't using my default uh, terminal color scheme, which is Grovebox. Um, and it looks like here they don't actually have the Grovebox theme, but they do have base 16, which is fairly similar. Oh, and you could even set a custom theme here, it looks like maybe. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on the base 16 theme and I'm gonna click set theme. Theme set, I come back over here and it should have set the theme. Now you can see it's using the color scheme I just set. So actually, this is kind of wicked cool all of a sudden. All right, so I'm gonna do fish config browse and I come back over here and let's say, all right, all right, all right, all right. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna pick this lava color scheme. I'm gonna hit set theme. Set. I'm going to come back over to the prompt. It's giving me examples of all the prompts here with images and everything. And what was I using before? I was using that disco theme. I still kind of like that one, but we'll change it just to test it. Let's do the scales one, right? So I click on the scales theme. I hit set prompt. Done. So now if I come back over here and I reload fish, I've got the new prompt. I'm using the new color scheme and I didn't touch the freaking config at all. One thing I need to figure out is how to set up aliases because I know, oh, it's cool. It can sort of tab complete and it shows you everything and it's much more verbose that way, but aliases are so freaking fast. If I can't hit V and launch Vim, there's no way in hell I'm gonna use this shell. But it looks like to create an alias, you just have to you know, do an alias how you would normally on the command line and let's alias uh, V to open up in Vim, right? So now if I hit V, I'm opening up in Vim. But the problem is when I reopen fish and I try to run V, it's not gonna work. So what I have to do is funk save uh, V and then reopen fish. I hit V, Vim is opened. It saved the function. So I think that's an example of them making it a little more complicated than it needed to be. Uh, I, I almost would have preferred to be able to just like go into this fish config file and, and make a little alias section, you know, like I do in any other shell and say alias and who knows, maybe you can, let's try it out. So let's say uh, aliases and let's alias uh, F equals Ranger. And I don't know, let's reload it and find out. Oh, so that does work. Okay, cool. This is definitely best of both worlds territory. You can go in and sort of use the config file the way they normally do, but it's also super, super user friendly. I don't know how difficult it would be to create my own custom prompt, and I don't necessarily have anything that I'm missing using Zeesh, so this is almost sort of hitting the territory of like solving a problem that I don't really have, but dude, I think I might change my shell for a little bit and stick stick with fish for a little while. This is cool. Uh, I think obviously this is really, really easy for new users. The whole like, uh, what what was it? It was fish config browse thing. That is the easiest configuration I've ever seen in my life. It just opens up a web page and you change settings and then it automatically changes them on the command line. I'm not even sure what technology they're using to make that happen. But that was dope. So this would take a little bit of config to get set up as like my main shell, but this is really, really great. I like this a lot. It's a win. Config files are great. 
for tracking and, and maintaining your, your configs across multiple systems, but there's no real reason that you should really necessarily just have to go into a config file and manually type up a config file just to get an app to function the way they want it to. And I think this is walking the line really well. I'm gonna look into how hard it is to design a custom prompt with Fish, and that might be another video in this series. Uh, we'll see. But for now, I'm gonna call that quits, and I'm gonna sit here and drink this art bag and edit a whole bunch of videos in a minute. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll see you in the next one.